going to be going over the last final level of the Krypton Lab. So Krypton level 6 to Krypton level 7. So I'm not going to go ahead and read this entire thing because it's pretty long, but I encourage you to go over to the website and check it out for yourself. Hopefully you're following along with these videos. Um, so in the last couple episodes, we've been using the, um, you know, the repeating keys. Um, and it says frequency analysis can destroy these keys. And we've We've demonstrated this multiple times. It's been using a, a block cipher or a veneer cipher, which is a type of block cipher, to encrypt these messages. Um, but what we're going to be going on to now in this level is what's called a stream cipher. Let's see where can we where can we see this. So now um, it's time to employ a stream cipher. There we go. So what this is, it creates a on-the-fly random key stream to encrypt the incoming plain text one byte at a time. So we're shifting not only now from ASCII text but to bytes, so it's going to decrypt, uh, it's going to convert all the ASCII text into a, its byte representation and then use that to be able to encrypt our message. Um, so what it does is it takes this ZOR operation, so typically the random key byte is ZORed with the plain text to produce the cipher text. So what a, a ZOR means is it takes, uh, so the logic table is like 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, so the only time where this output produces um, a one is when one of the inputs is one and not the other. So for example, zero, zero has no one, so it's just gonna produce zero. Zero, one is gonna output one because one of the inputs has a one and the other one does not. Same with this one, but when they both have ones, it's gonna be a zero, so it's exclusively or, so one or the other, but not both. Um, so that's how an or would work in terms of, in terms of bytes, or a zor would work in terms of bytes. And what we notice is that a zor is uh, reversible. So if you zor something that's already been zored, then you just get the same uh, message as your plain text. Um, so that we're going to use that to our to our advantage here. Um, if the random key stream can be replicated at the receiving end, then the further zor will produce the plain text once again. That's the reversibility of it. So from this example forward, we'll be working with bytes, not ASCII text. That's what I was talking about before. So an editor like hex dump is a necessity, and I'll be showing us how to use that. So in this example, the key file is in your directory. However, it's not readable to you. The binary encrypt six is also available. So it will encrypt, it will read the key file and encrypt any messages you desire and uh, using the key and a random number. So let's go ahead and hop into our uh, shell here. And we're already logged into the SSH from last time. And let's go ahead and head into our directory. So we're gonna be working in Krypton six this time. And we have this encrypt six binary that's going to be encrypting our messages, similar to how we saw in one of the earlier levels, where we can pass whatever plain text we want through that encryption method uh, using this key file .dat. It's kind of the same principle. This Krypton 7 is the file that we're going to be trying to decode using this key file uh, data. So let's go ahead and make our temporary directory like we did last time, so mktemp tac d. I'll go ahead and copy this and then move into it, just so we have a, a little working area. So let's go ahead and link over the keyfile.dat uh, slash krypton, krypton6, keyfile.dat, and we will go ahead and move that over. So now it's in our directory here, and then we'll go ahead and make our appropriate permissions for the directory. There we go. So now we can go ahead and start using this encrypt6 um, encrypt binary. So how do we want to go about doing this? So my first instinct was that we need to find out the key. So let's go ahead and ls this really quick. So we need to find out this Krypton 7 key by somehow knowing some kind of pattern from this encrypt 6 that we can use to our advantage. And we know that it uses the binary uh, data from our plain text message. So let's go ahead and do a, an, an example of this. So let's pass it some plain text. So let's create a file. I'm just going to use the first line of the book uh, Tale of Two Cities. So let's see, so let's touch, uh, we'll call it tale.txt, and then we'll go ahead and edit this, and we'll paste in that first line, all in caps, and we will exit out. Okay, so now let's go ahead and make sure this is correct. There we go. So now let's run this through our encrypt function. Oops. So let's do slash krypton, krypton6, encrypt6, and then our file, so that's going to be tail.txt, and then we'll call it cyphertail.txt. That's our output file. Um, let's just call it cyphertail. And there it is. So let's go ahead and cat this out. And we see our encrypted message 
from this, and we can see it's the same length as it was the best of times and the worst of times, but we don't know how this is being encrypted. So let's go ahead and take a look at the binary bits here. So we can do a hex dump. So the command to do a hex dump is xxd. Uh, if you wanted to look at the manual pages for that, you just do man xxd, and then you can read this over if you want. It's not that long of a file. So let's do xxd. And by default, it's going to dump it in hexadecimal format, but to specify that we want to dump it in binary format, we can do tack b, and then our file name. So let's do tail.txt, and that's our binary for this message here. So we can see i is going to correspond to this piece of binary here, which is 64 plus uh, 8, which is 72, plus 1 is 73, and so on. So if you don't know uh, all about the binary stuff, there's a lot of online resources to to learn about how to read binary, convert it from binary to decimal. And now let's go ahead and do a dump of uh, cyphertail.txt, and we see this. So now all we should have to do is zor each byte to each other, and it should give us the key. So let's take a look. So our plain text, I'm just going to record this so it, um, it's a little bit easier to look at. So our plain text is that, and then our ciphertext is this one down here. And... There we go. So now our key should be the zor between these two. So 0 and 0 is going to zor to 0. This is going to be 1 to 1 is 0. 0, 0, 0. And then this is going to be a mapping to a 1. And then these two are zeros. So the key is now corresponding to the letter 4, or the number 4 rather, which corresponds to the letter E. So the first letter in the key should be E. So from this, my first instinct was to create a Python script that just goes through a big long message um, and then a big long ciphertext of that message and to decode and see if we can get the key um, really easily and see where it kind of repeats and we'll know where the cutoff for the key is. However, as I was like about halfway through writing the script, uh, I went to get a, a drink of water and I was kind of thinking about it and I, it, it kind of hit me that all I have to do is create a big long text of all A's and then just zor that or and then just encrypt that and the zor of the encrypted message should be the key itself because if you encrypt so for example if A is zero so A is going to be our, st our zero here so it's going to be just like this it may not be exactly zero but it's going to be the base of what uh, all the other numbers are so B for example would be just one higher than whatever A is if A is not zero then B is just going to be one higher than whatever it is so if A is zero and we do something like the letter, I don't know, say the letter is, say the letter is B and it's zero, 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 one, then the key that it's going to spit out is B, right? So all of this is going to be like this and the key that it spits out is B, right? So, cause that's, that's going to be whatever, you know, whatever this mapping is. Um, so all we have to do is just create a big long string of A's, which are all zeros. And then whatever it spits out in the ciphertext that's going to be our key because it's just it's just storing it with zero, which is just the exact ciphertext. Wherever there's a, going to be a one here, say that it was like this. I don't know what number that would or letter that would correspond to, but the key that it spits out is going to be exactly that letter. So the ciphertext is going to match the key, and that's the principle that we're going to be working with here. So if I can just create a big long plain text of A's, we can just look at the key by just running it through the encryption method, and that will just reveal the key. So let's go ahead and do that. So the quickest way to create just a big long text of A's is through an inline Python script. So we'll do Python text C and then double quotes and we put our Python command in here. So we'll do print uh, the letter A and we're gonna do it in single quotes just cause we were using double quotes. And then we'll multiply this by say 100. That's gonna be a nice long string of A's. And we'll output that and we can see we can just get an output of 100 A's and we'll save this into a file called, uh, we'll call it a.txt. So now if we go ahead and cat a.txt, we'll see all those a's. Now let's run this through the ciphertext and what this should output, is, or the encryption method, what this should output is the key, which is also the ciphertext because with the zor method, as I just showed, the key is gonna equal the ciphertext if, the, the, if it's equal to zero. So, or if the plain text is all zeros. So let's go ahead and do that. So slash krypton, slash krypton six, slash encrypt six, and then we'll do a.txt, and we'll do ca.txt, or cipher uh, underscore a.txt, just for clarity. So we'll go ahead and cat this out. Oops, cat to uh, cipher a.txt. I can't type today. Did it not save? 
There we go. Okay, perfect. So now this is going to be our key. And let's see if it repeats at all. So we'll go ahead and enter this in. This should be our key now. So we can go ahead and we can see it repeats right about here. So each of these lines starts repeating. So we know that the key is, let's see how many characters we highlight this, 30 characters selected. So the key is going to be 30 characters and this should be the key and this makes sense. When we did this before uh, with the not uh, big string of A's, just like a random piece of plain text, we also got E for that first position and this makes sense, this corresponds. So this should be our key. So all we need to do is run the plain text or run our Krypton 7 message through our decoder with this as the key and we should get the password for the next level. So let's go ahead and SCP our Vineyard decoder up there that we used in previous videos. So SCP tech capital P 2231 and then our file which is Vineyard decoder and we'll do it to Krypton 6 uh, at Krypton dot labs dot over the wire dot org at our TMP directory. Oop, that's not in my clipboard. Let's go ahead and copy that over. There we go. And we'll upload that with the password, which we got from the last episode. And there we go. Now using this Vineyard decoder, we can go ahead and hopefully solve this if we are correct that this is the key. Let me go ahead and copy this again. And we'll do Vineyard or Python 3 Vineyard decoder.py. And then the file that we want to do is slash Krypton, Krypton 6, Krypton 7, and then our key, we'll paste in. And there we go. That's going to spit out our password. So that's LFSR is not random. Linear feedback shift register is not random. Um, and it, it talks about this in the, um, in the description here. You can read about uh, LFSR and things like that. It's also in hint 2. Um, so we can go ahead and call this one done. So log out. And let's go ahead and see if, just make sure we're right. So Krypton7, and our password should be this here. We'll paste that in. And there we go. That's going to be the last level. There's no more after this. So we can successfully call this Krypton Lab done. Uh, if you guys uh, liked what we had here or had any questions, you can leave that down in the comments. Uh, I'm Mike Krasinski, and I will see you guys 